Welcome to Thrive in Design, a podcast about making money and beautiful interiors as it relates to product-based businesses in the interior design industry. Each week, we'll discuss innovative strategies on how to approach product development and design sales in a shifting market. I'm your host, Nicole lachey Ben. Hello and welcome back for another episode of the Thrive in Design podcast. Thanks so much for being a part of this season. We are on episode 12. I'm Nicole lachey Ben, your host and the CEO and lead strategist of Thrive in Design. And if you're not aware, Thrive in Design is way more than just a podcast. We are de- a design consultancy that focuses on helping interior product companies increase their brand awareness and revenue. We do this by taking a strategic look at a designer's experience with your brand. So when you work with us, it could be a lot of things, but we first start by auditing that experience, creating a strategic plan to move forward, and sometimes we also might be helping you execute that strategy, revamping your marketing tools, and so on and so forth. But overall, we're focusing on that offline and online experience to make sure that your brand story is told cohesively across all platforms. So again, Thank you for sticking with us for all the episodes of this season of the podcast. It's been a special one with so many guests and so many solo episodes to get you value, valuable information during the season of the podcast. And as you're well aware, we've talked about a lot of different things from AI to sustainability. And of course, my favorite thing, storytelling as it relates to many different aspects of your brand. So we're going to finish it out today by wrapping it up with storytelling and talking about your firm library presence, right? So as we all know in this industry, most, if not all, design firms have a library. Now, this library space is dwindling and has been getting smaller and smaller over the years, no matter what design firm you are Uh, thinking of, especially in metro areas. So if you're in a city like New York or even Washington, D.C., or definitely Chicago, uh, the design firm libraries are getting smaller and smaller. Most of the time, these design firms are moving to smaller office spaces, and therefore their design firm libraries are getting smaller. And what does that mean for you, an interior product company? That means your shelf space is a prime real estate in that in that design library so in a firm where you may have had space for 10 binders uh, in the past you might now only have space for two binders or maybe even none at all Um, because people are leaning into resources like material bank or some of their competitor platforms or my resource library or spec simple or different things like that to have a virtual library space so i say all this to say that even though Uh, real estate space or shelf space is dwindling at these design firms, having your firm library presence at the top of mind is still very important. Um, For your interior product company, depending on what type of materials that you are providing, you might be used to creating binders, tip cards, or maybe even smaller loose samples that go in drawers so that when a designer is working on a project, They can go to your library or go to their library, go to your shelf in the library, and then pull those tip cards or pull those loose samples from the drawers to start using them on their project. Uh, You might also be thinking about um, uh, new product pre, sorry, you might also be thinking about new product launches and how you're incorporating those into libraries, right? So are you putting in new tip cards every time you come out with a product launch? Are you um, making small samples available to them? Or are you just keeping that in a digital experience? No matter what you're thinking about, you should always be considering what your strategy is going to be with your printed marketing materials, whether that's on the shelf, in the drawer, or a takeaway from the product presentation that your rep or leader of your sales company is doing at these design firms. So of course I would be remiss if I did not go to my best best friend, ChatGPT, to brainstorm a few more things that you can start thinking about when it comes to your printed marketing materials that are going into these firms or being used as takeaways when your reps are doing product presentations at um, these firms or at trade shows or in your showrooms or what have you. 
So it goes back to your story. How are you telling your brand story through your printed marketing materials that are going to be shared um, in these different ways? The first thing that you can start thinking about is compelling visuals. So you can use high quality eye catching visuals that reflect on your brand identity. Incorporate consistent colors, fonts, and imagery to create a cohesive, memorable brand presence. And this goes back to what we were talking about a couple of episodes ago when I was sharing about how sometimes a, a rep is responsible for creating a product presentation. So imagine if that rep does not have graphic design experience. They are creating your product, a product presentation to share a brand story that they're not even clear about. Then they're creating their own marketing materials and probably different fonts, different colors, nothing is on brand and everything looks all over the place, right? So now they've gone into maybe a firm like Gensler or uh, Perkins and Will or Perkins Eastman or MBBJ, who knows where they are. And they've done this product presentation that looks off brand and now their story isn't straight. And then they leave marketing materials behind or things on the shelf that looks even more different, right? So now the designer is confused. They're like, who did I talk to for what brand? And how do we recognize that brand on our shelf, right? So compelling visuals, I'm gonna drill that down till the cows come home. It's like people say, I don't even know what that means, but till the cow comes home <laughs> for compelling visuals. The next thing is having um, narrative in your copywriting. A lot of times people do not think about this enough and i actually have a guest in mind for next season of the podcast who specifically does copywriting for the interior design industry but it's so important to make sure that the narrative that you're telling in your marketing materials is telling your brand's values your mission your unique selling points in a concise impactful way because if no one is there to represent your brand right if your sales rep is long gone and that designer is coming back to the library to pull things off the shelf, what are they seeing and learning about the narrative of your story in this copywriting? What are, you, what are the unique selling points, right? Why should they care, again, over the competitor that's right next to you on the shelf space? The next thing is to showcase your brand personality, right? So this is very important, right? <laughs> brand personality, if you, don't think I'm funny, well, maybe we're not good. Um, we're not gonna work well together, but I always wanna share like my personal pers my personal personality. I don't know, that's a double, <laughs> double words next to each other. But I always wanna share my personality and the things that I'm doing with my brand. So you get, you know, who you're working with, the type of person that you're working with. Same way for your interior product company. What is your brand personality? Is it humorous? Is it sincere? Is it sophisticated and luxurious? And how is that coming across in your marketing material that is there left behind in the library without a physical person there to tell your story? And the tone of whatever you're doing and the graphics and everything should correlate together to have a response from your designer that's engaging, right? Um, again, your marketing material can also tell the story of real people or real projects, heavy on the real projects, right? Because at the end of the day, especially if you are a new upcoming brand, you've only been around for two to five years, um, you want to have some real stories, right? If you don't have any notable projects yet, you want to tell the stories of real people, right? If you're two to three, two to five years in, how long have your founders been in this industry? Have you, is this your second go round in the interior products world? Were you a designer before and then you wanted to get into interior products? Um, what is it, right, that you're sharing in that marketing material? If you do have some real projects under your belt, that's even better because then that is able to share a visual story of how your interior products can be used in the space, right? If you have digital wall covering, has it been has it been used on the headboard walls of a notable hotel brand or a boutique, or a boutique hotel brand? If you have um, carpets, and I'm looking at the space around me, if you have carpets, has it been used in ballrooms um, of a hotel brand or you know whatever it is, and cruise ships, right? It could be used anywhere. 
but do you have any projects where you have beautiful imagery, not snapped on your sales rep cell, uh, cell phone, because I've seen that too, but beautiful pr professional photography that could be used in your marketing material so that designers could then imagine how your interior products could be used in a space. The next thing to do when you are creating these marketing materials is to make sure you have visual hierarchy. Now, I'm telling you a lot of things that can be uh, integrated into your marketing materials that is left behind in these libraries, the photos, the narratives, the copywriting, right? So whoever your designer is needs to be creating visual hierarchy of what's important for a designer to know right away versus know maybe five minutes down the line of them looking deeper into the um, marketing materials. And the next is interactive elements. Now, I know you're like, interactive elements, how can it be interactive if it's a physical printed marketing material? Well, it can be, right? Some of the things that you can include on your marketing materials left behind in these design firms are QR codes, right, that lead over to some other form of information, a spec sheet, that product, um, sorry, those project photos, um, augmented reality right um, which where they can see your product in an actual space especially if your furniture right or even a quartz countertop can they download an app and then look at the room that they are in and see your product placed in that space right um, and is there a way for that product marketing material to encourage some type of engagement, right? Maybe it's take the material and take a photo with it and use a hashtag, share it on Instagram and tag us. Who knows? The sky's the limit, right? But there are ways to do interactive elements with your printed marketing material that are leave behinds for when your reps are not there to talk with the designers. And that goes into more digital experiences, right? We just touched on QR codes, we just touched on augmented reality and digital experiences and how that can be tied into your printed marketing materials. Um, some other things are things like the social media integration that I just mentioned, right? Are people able to follow you directly from your printed marketing materials or follow their current rep so that they can see the behind the scenes of their reps day? Um, are people able to engage with a social media campaign to participate in a contest that creates a little bit more fun? And just as a short side note, uh, when I was a rep, there was one point that I did 12 days of Christmas, right, with my clientele. So <clears throat> I was able to get my top designers at all of my A accounts to follow my personal page on Instagram. Um, do a live drawing with them each day for 12 days leading up to Christmas and give out gifts to my clientele. And then I did a whole, you know, social media um, content around like going to the design firm and taking selfies with my designers, giving them their gifts. Like it was a whole thing. And it wasn't necessarily tied to the exact product, but it was about engaging with my clientele, building relationships, and it ultimately actually led to a specification and sale of just over $200,000, right? So all that to say, social media integration can be played on in a lot of different ways from your printed marketing materials and also in the role of your reps, which we can get into another time because we only got a short episode today. The other ways that you can do, um, of course, is video content, right? So is there some QR code that leads to a video? And that's really good for installation videos for your clientele, right? Especially if you have a special product that needs to be installed in a very unique way, they need to understand, is, are there going to be limitations? Is this going to, is the installation going to increase the price because they need to bring in a special subcontractor in on the job, right? Um, and it needs to be subbed out that installation video can be a make or break of them specifying your product. And last but not least is a mobile friendly landing page, right? I'm saying all of these things about QR codes that lead to videos and to your reps and to your website and to spec sheets. But at the end, the, at the end of the day, that experience is going to be done from their phone. So the designer is going over to the library, T scanning the QR code with their phone, right? Not the computer back at their desk, 
So your website or that landing page that they land on from the QR code needs to be mobile friendly. So ensure that any digital experiences linked from your printed materials are optimized for mobile devices to have a seamless transition between print and digital for your user experience, right? So I know I said a lot there and I can probably do an episode on each of those different parts that I just talked about, which I might have to do. Um, but that was just to give you guys a high level overview of some things that you can start to consider for that touch point, right? For your firm libraries and or your printed marketing materials that I don't think are going out of style anytime soon. So your call to action for today as we wrap up this season of the Thrive and Design podcast is to think about which episode resonated with you the most. Because I always have people reach out to me and say, hey, I was listening to episode five or 10 or 12 and my company is struggling with that exact thing. The things that you shared, Nicole, is exactly what we need help with. I have this happen all the time and I want that person or that next person to be you. So if one of these episodes resonated with you, whether it's this one or a previous one from this season or a previous season, this is your chance to become uh, one of the Thrive and Design clients of 2024 or if anything, just to spark another conversation. So go ahead and go to my LinkedIn, send me a DM, or again, send me an email, hello at nicolashay.com. Let's get the conversation going and talk about what resonated with you the most? What pain points is your interior product company uh, experiencing right now? And then we can see if there's any synergies between our brands and see how the Thrive and Design can help your team and your interior product company thrive in the interior design industry this year. That's a wrap for the season. I can't wait to hear from you. And until next time, I can't wait to share more content with you in season six. All right, bye-bye. Thanks for joining us this week on Thrive and Design. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Thrive and Design. And for more strategies on how your product company can innovate in the interior design industry, head to training.thriveanddesign.co. As always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to create captivating content. That was a wrap for this season, but we'll see you soon. Thank you.